Like most homes, every Christmas season, I set the ladder up and spend an afternoon hanging lights from our gutters and the roof's edge. We have some old vintage light strands, the kind that when one bulb goes out, the whole thing goes out. Half the project is checking for blown bulbs and twisting on new ones. Every year I say I'm going to buy new lights, and every year I drag the same lights back out of the attic. You're probably picking up it's not my favorite chore of the year. But there's always something rewarding about that moment, when the whole family steps out into the yard, the lights are finally plugged in. The warm glow of red and white and blue and green reflecting off windows and spilling onto the siding. It fills the house with all of those Christmas feelings, whether it's lights on the roof or candles in windows or flames in the fireplace. We have a very old tradition of celebrating Christ's birth into the world with the symbol of light, breaking into the darkness. It's easy, having finished the Old Testament, to simply turn the page and pick right up into the new one. But this time between the Testaments was a long period of waiting in Israel's history. Historians tell us there were probably around 400 years between the two Testaments. 400 years without a recorded prophetic witness. It was a time of waiting, of darkness. Darkness deepened by the spreading darkness of sin from Genesis beginning. How long, O oh Lord, is the repeated refrain of the psalmist. How long would humanity have to wait for this darkness to be dispelled? God's people continued to wait for that day when a Messiah would rescue them and usher in an eternal kingdom, a renewal of all things, a light. There was a righteous man named Simeon, and like so many in Israel, Simeon was eagerly waiting for the Messiah. Simeon was in the temple the very day that Jesus' parents came to dedicate him. Simeon, overcome by joy, burst into worship. He is a light to reveal God to the nations. Looking for a way to describe Jesus, Simeon chose the image of light. Jesus was a light to the world. For centuries, artists and poets have captured the Christmas nativity scene in images of light. The glow of Mary swaddling her child, the brilliance of that star guiding the Magi from the east, and the rush of angelic light breaking open the sky above the shepherds in their fields. The place of Jesus' birth, Bethlehem, must have been busy that night. Families from out of town, each packed into their homes, a census to be taken. I imagine them gathered around meals in the dim light of oil lamps, talking about politics, family gossip. There was a world in an age of conflict and its raging kings, whispers of rebellion, and hunger for salvation was all around. As they blew out their lamps and fell asleep, just a few yards away, a baby was being born. The stillness of that night, broken by his first cry, clearing his lungs and taking in the world's air. Who of them realized what that child's cry really meant? God himself in the flesh, a light bursting forth into the darkness, a light revealing God to mankind, all of it in this little nativity scene. Unknown, first-time parents, poor bowing shepherds, a stone-feeding trough holding that infant, scraps of cloth for swaddling, kings would be forgotten and their kingdoms lost, but this scene, God born into the world, would reshape history for all eternity. There's a great Christmas word taken from a prophecy of Isaiah which captures it, Emmanuel. It means God with us. God had often given Israel signs of his presence pillar of fire that guided them in the wilderness, or the cloud which enveloped the temple on its dedication. But those signs were nothing like this one. God had taken on flesh. This story, humanity's story, was now embodied by God himself. He hadn't simply tossed down a set of rules. He hadn't sent us searching for some hidden treasure. 
He came to us. He made our story his story. Whatever is to come in the rest of this book, God had definitively put himself at the heart of it. God with us. Emmanuel. Listen.